So I am going to bring back on the stage uh, Roger Willis of Universal Well Services and Mike Hogan of, his, of Mo Hogan Energy Consulting. And we're going to tell you a story of something I'm actually very proud about. I'm proud to be on the stage here with these two gentlemen. And um, I, maybe we should move down one. We'll be more centered or something. Yeah, let's do it this way. Um, I, I want to, we want to tell you in the, this is just a sort of a brief conversation. It's not a full panel. But I thought it was worth telling you about um, a project that we worked on. Uh, we're very proud that this is a success story of the American Middle East Institute. And it's really an extraordinary story because we, three years ago at our annual conference here in this room, a, an individual from Oman Oil Company came up to me and said that there was a, um, that Oman was looking to start its own hydraulic fracturing natural gas production uh, capability. And he wanted me to introduce him to some oil services companies. A friend of mine named Jeff, Jeff Kupfer said, you should speak to Roger Willis at Universal Well Services. And I called up Roger. Actually, Jeff introduced us by email. And I called up. Uh, then we had a conversation. And next thing you know, we had a group coming from Oman to talk to, to meet with Roger out in Meadville. We drove out there. and. Um, I'd like Roger maybe to tell us the story about uh, what happened, because in a remarkable, uh, remarkably short amount of time, we, Roger and Mike, created uh, this capability working with the Omanis uh, to develop their own uh, hydraulic fracturing capability in, in Oman. It's, it's the first time ever, first pressure pumping team ever in, in, in Oman. So Roger, I'd just like to ask you, tell us, tell us a little bit, well, what did you think when we all showed up in Meadville? <laughs> it's, it's, is my microphone on? It, it's not often that you get to do something in your life as fun and as fundamental as what uh, Simon introduced us to. Simon mentioned, would you, would you be willing to entertain this group of people from Oman? And I, and I thought, this sounds exciting, this is interesting. And, and she explained what they wanted to do, which was to develop this, uh, their own in, uh, indigenous hydraulic fracturing capability. And uh, I said, you know, that's something that sounds really fascinating. Mike Hogan and I have known each other for probably almost 35 years now. And back after the wall fell in, uh, 90, in the early 90s, uh, we worked in Poland to try and do something like that. And it didn't, it didn't really work, but we thought, well, let's, let's dust it back off again and look at it again. So, so the visitors came. We talked to them, and at the beginning, I think it was funny because we kept encouraging them to say, well, you can do this on your own. We, we'll, we'll help you. We'll act as a template. We'll, uh, we'll facilitate the operations. We'll, we'll help you build the, the RFPs for soliciting this, and then we'll also take care of the training. And uh, I wish that we were able to, to show some of the slides of what we, what we accomplished, but it was, it was absolutely fascinating. So we started, and... Uh, and Simon brought people over. We had meetings uh, with, with, with a variety of different people from Oman. And from that, we started to define the needs of a, of a service company like ours. And then we built the training infrastructure. Now, we were very busy at the time. As, you, as we had described earlier with the growth in our company with the Marcellus Shale, we recognized that there really was not the opportunity to, we didn't have the time to manage that. So, I called Mike and asked Mike if he would be willing to act as the intermediary, to use us sort of as a, a dress guide there. And, and uh, he could say, well, this is what we want to do. And we, we, we would then utilize the components that we had, the infrastructure that we had, to, to model the development of that. So I, I don't know. Did you want to talk about that some? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> well, my position was actually working for, uh, for Abraj, the division of the Oman Oil Company, which undertook this project. And, and again, as Roger said, I was kind of the intermediary. I tried to uh, work without totally disrupting uh, Universal's day-to-day -day operations uh, to utilize a lot of their technical people in developing a plan. Uh, our first step was to put a business plan together. Uh, took from that business plan and 
developed uh, a technical plan uh, for specifying and designing the equipment. The equipment was actually designed and specified working with the engineers from uh, Universal, uh, some folks from Oman, and a number of the manufacturers. We then took all that data, developed RFPs, which went out to all, ma the majority of the manufacturers in the United States. Uh, and we settled on a company called Rolagon, which is part of uh, NLV, National Oil Well Varco, uh, to construct all of the equipment. And then the next phase was to, again, uh, perform due diligence while all this equipment was being built. And uh, we spent a lot of time with the manufacturers uh, making sure that the specified equipment was properly utilized. And we, we had to deviate a little bit from the, the general run-of-the-mill equipment they were building here in the U.S. because of the high temperature situation in the Middle East, as well as the availability of pumps and component parts. So we had to be very specific on the, on the components that were utilized in the equipment. Along that same line, we started a training program Universal has a wonderful training facility at their Meadville uh, shop, and it's, it's probably second to none, even with some of the, the, the major service companies. I think Universal's facility is right, right down to earth and, and gets the job done. So I worked with uh, Tony Calderali, who runs that program for Universal, and we developed a, a specific program uh, starting from the top management guys all the way down to the field people uh, that were going to be involved in this project in Oman. And we're also involved in, in, in helping them hire their very uh, top uh, managers. Uh, and then we started bringing people over. Uh, the top managers in the beginning all the way down to the, the last sessions were with their field operations guys. Let me uh, break in and tell you some funny stories about that, though. Because as, uh, as the group arrived, it, was, it happened to be in the middle of the winter. And, uh, and they arrived and, uh, and were not properly outfitted. So the first thing Mike did was took everybody to Walmart to get coats and that kind of thing. And then we came back. And here's this group of fellows uh, from the Middle East that are staring at me. And I'm looking at them. And I, and I said, uh, how many of you have seen snow before? And, and a few people's hands went up. And they said, well, I've seen it on television. And I said, OK, <laughs> the first order of business is we're going to have a snowball fight. So everybody headed out, and we had a snowball fight in the, in, the, in the parking lot, and that broke the ice. And from there on, I, I can tell you something, and, I, and I'll, I, the, the, the most gratifying part of this wasn't just that we started a business which is now successful and operating on its own. It's that we made partnerships. If you look at some of the leadership, we have a leadership training course up there. And uh, here we had this group of folks that are from our facilities from Kentucky, eastern Kentucky, uh, northern West Virginia, um, Ohio, Pennsylvania, working side by side. And it was an interesting thing when you had the group from Oman and the group from Kentucky. The Omanis are looking at the guys from Kentucky, and the guys from Kentucky are looking at the people from Oman. And pretty soon, they meld, they, they merged into one, one group, which at the very beginning, they were so little standoffish, but if, if you yeah. were to watch what happened after that, you'd have tables of people that had worked for service companies all comparing notes on how to do this more efficiently. The, the photograph that's up right now shows one of our graduation uh, meetings, and I, and I happen to have the turban that, that was presented to me. They showed me how to tie it. I, I didn't do a Doesn't very good job. Doesn't he look Omani? He looks very but, Omani. Uh, but it was, it was really fun. And again, oh, here, here's a picture of me uh, uh, tying this. And uh, I think I had some folks that were, uh, were laughing at me, but I did ultimately get it on my head. And I have this right near my desk to remind me of the friendships. But, uh, but I witnessed it. I, I was fortunate to attend the graduation ceremony that you held. Uh, for the Omanis, and uh, just the level of camaraderie of the whole team being with uh, the, the Americans that were there, also part of the training, uh, it, was, it was extraordinary. This is more than business. This is friendship. This is building trust. It's building understanding. You never would have put these two groups of people together, but this is what we aspire to do, because it is good for business to have this kind of uh, understanding. One thing we did, though, that was really quite a bit of fun was that we we took the folks from Kentucky, we took the folks from Ohio, and we asked them to do a travel log of the United States, and particularly the areas that they're from. And then we asked the folks from Oman to do the same thing. And so we had a cultural um, exchange one day that was just, it was amazing, where we had the group from Oman talking about Oman and what a beautiful place. 
and you had the folks from Kentucky and from Southern Ohio or the other areas in Pennsylvania discussing the United States, and here's a group of people that maybe had come over and hadn't really expected to travel around, and they went everywhere from Drake Well to uh, Niagara Falls and, and got a really great picture of, of, of the states. And Mike, Mike, it, Mike took them around to a variety of different places throughout the country, but maybe you can cover some of that. Well, there were, of course, some of the group, we, uh, we ended up going to Texas and actually performing tests on the equipment uh, and also training on the actual equipment that is now in Oman working day every day. Uh, so they came up to speed on their own equipment as well as spending time at all the camps uh, or a number of the camps in the Northeast that Universal operates. Uh, kind of a funny story, but it was, uh, we, we went out on an on a actual frack job that Universal was performing with, with, with one of their clients and it was the coldest day of the year that, that last year. And it was about uh, 12 or 14 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. And uh, everybody went back to Walmart and bought another jacket. I mean, everybody looked like uh, SpongeBob out there, uh, all bulked up. <laughs> and the guys just couldn't believe how cold it was. But they got started to get more and more and more involved in it. And it was, it was just tremendous watching these guys. But afterwards, they all think we're ready to go back to Oman now. It's a little warmer. <laughs> Next time you have us, and, and we, we, we did a uh, survey at the end of the program, what would you recommend we do different so we can improve for the next group that's coming? And it, without a doubt, every single one said, hold the program in the summer. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take that one into consideration in the next group. But it was a truly remarkable story, just the, the, the camaraderie and, and the friendship but also that you were able to do this project in, you know, from, from the very beginning from, with, with nothing to develop a capability in, in less than three years, two and a half years. Well, it was, it was great teamwork with the folks at Universal and the folks in Oman. And, and there was, you know, some interesting phone calls and uh, conferences and meetings uh, throughout the period. But everybody really pulled together in uh, the, the cooperation from the, from the guys at Universal. Sometimes I'd be calling up the, their head of their engineering and, and he's all wrapped into a, a, a new development on utilizing natural gas uh, to fire their, uh, their equipment, uh, which was state of the art and, and one of the first companies to ever do that. And yet I drag him away to talk about a pump design for, a, for one of the machines that's going to Oman. And they were most gracious in doing that. We, everybody burned a lot of midnight oil. But it, uh, it, when you look at the timeline, it was pretty good, but there was every, every piece of the project we did, we had a plan before we executed it, and, and uh, that helped a lot. It really, uh, the, the, a lot of the credit has to go to Simon, because uh, if you'd seen, as we, as we started this project, again, this was something that when no one had really considered before. This was, a, this was a total green field. We really didn't know what we were gonna do, and so every once in a while, our ship would land on a shoal someplace, and Simon would call up in the, late at night, and I don't know where she finds the time, because it seems like she, her uh, hours are like my hours. We'd be exchanging emails at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> or two o'clock in the morning or something. Somehow or another, she'd find the way to float the boat again, and, and make the connections to get us going. So I, I really think that uh, this is, as Mike said, a, a great cooperative venture, but uh, it, it really well, hinged a lot on how Simon put this together. So. I said when I came, <laughs> I actually was saying that I, I, I'm proud to be on the stage with the two of you. And Roger, you, you, you were so ready. You were ready to embrace this project. I mean, you really have an adventurous spirit and, and just, uh, just a very generous heart. Because you were, I mean, this wasn't something you were looking for. I mean, Roger is exceedingly busy. And as you know, there's so much going on in this region. So. Uh, Roger, um, I think uh, it's, it's really a testament to your character and your drive. You, you, you welcome these people and, and, and they, love, they love Pittsburgh, they love this region, they love Americans. So this was, a, you know, you, you guys were great ambassadors for. One comment yeah. that I have to be careful how I say this, but as, as we as a group got to be closer and closer together, obviously we started to discuss things they, they would ask me questions about America. I would ask them questions about the Middle East. And this was really peer to peer. I mean, we were, we're and, and one thing was I said, well, tell me how your vision of, of things in the United States has changed. And as a group, they sat there and they said, you know, when we got off the plane at, at JFK and we looked at each other and we saw the people looking at us, we said to each other, everybody thinks we're a terrorist. 
And that made my heart just sad. And I said, well, what do you think now? And they said, we've never, we have not seen any discrimination. We're, we're completely floored by how many friends we've made here. And no matter where we've traveled, whether it's Niagara Falls or Titusville, everybody was friendly to us. Everybody treated us like, like, like brothers. And, and, and I think at the end of it, if there was one piece that was gratifying by all this, and it was important to get the business going, it was that a group of people left here and have sent, continued to keep in touch with emails and things, and, and they say some of the best times they've ever had were in Meadville, Pennsylvania. And that's a, that's a great thing to say. So uh, that, was, that was wonderful. Well, thank you very much. Um, we have time maybe for one question, actually. We, we're trying to keep on schedule. And as you know, we pack a lot into our, to our intense conferences. So if anyone has a question about the process or is interested in this kind of thing for their own country, um, uh, feel free to, to ask a question. Um, if not, any, anybody have a question? <laughs> I, I think the question was, are we going to go back to Poland? A lot of, a lot of uh, exploration is going on right now to evaluate the reserves that are in Poland. And I've got to say, uh, I had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful time that we spent over in Poland. And uh, what, a, what a great people and what a wonderfully beautiful country it is. So if the opportunity arises, right now, I don't think we ever envisioned that Pennsylvania would have the opportunities that it has, and it's, uh, it's directed my focus a little bit here uh, more than I ever expected. So uh, given the opportunity, I'd love to go back to Poland. I think, I think just quickly following up on that, I, I, I track the, the, the Polish situation quite a bit, and there's been some recent exploration in Poland, and, and there was quite a notable uh, uh, large international company pulled out of Poland recently. And from my understanding, in a lot of the issues that we had when we worked in Poland in the early 90s, was the, the uh, regulatory environment uh, was really not even in place. They were kind of writing the rules a day before uh, you, you'd get there. And it's still a little bit that way. And, and I think a few people have been discouraged that have gone to Poland uh, recently uh, by that same situation. It still exists. The rules seem to be changing every other week. And I think once they get a solidified rules and some of the business law that will better define relationships between companies, uh, I think it'll go on. But there's been changes fairly dramatically, and, and some of the larger companies have been frustrated by that and have decided that there's other places that are easier to work. But I think Poland will come along. I've, uh, some of the folks that I do talk to regularly seem to be encouraging that way. But I, there, that, that's one of the issues when you start to work in some of these areas that haven't had a lot of experience uh, in this area. Well, I'd like to, uh, if you would all join me in, in, in giving a round of applause to these two gentlemen here for this amazing project they, they accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.